Welcome to the greatest chipset competition in recorded history. We read through all of your comments on our previous comparison and after thoughtful consideration, we're back with a new and improved video, which includes the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, the Tensor G3, and the A17 Pro. Whether you want to edit photos, render 4K videos, or play some hardcore CPU intensive games, you're going to need an amazing setup. But before we dive into a juicy comparison, hi, I'm Olive, your host here at Versus, and I'd like to thank Hide.me for sponsoring this video. First things first, a quick recap of what we've got here. Here is where you can keep track of the timer of each respective chipset. And over here is where you can see the battery percentage. Now get your popcorn ready, grab a drink, and lean back because it's time to begin. The kickoff will be with Adobe Lightroom, which is a professional image editing software. It also features a variety of tools for processing and storing a large number of image files, making it more efficient for those who edit many photos at once. We're keeping our standards up by using 50 JPEG and 50 RAW files for our Lightroom tests, and we've prepared a preset specifically for these photos. Applying the preset to the photos was the first step, and the Snapdragon finishes this test first with a mind-blowing speed of 15 seconds. A17 Pro, reliable as ever, takes second place with 36 seconds. Google's very own Tensor G3 comes in last place with 48 seconds. Before we go on, it would make us really happy if you could like this video and subscribe to be a part of our Versus community if you aren't already. Now that the easy part is out of the way, let's get down to the good stuff and hit that render button. Even computers would have a hard time with this as you'd need a high-end gaming or work PC to be able to finish these tests in a short amount of time. So let's see what results come in. And it looks like one of these chipsets is breaking away from the rest, and the winner is, drum roll please! First place goes to the A17 Pro at 3 minutes and 45 seconds. In second place comes the Snapdragon with 4 minutes and 48 seconds. And lastly we have the Tensor G3, which took a whole 10 minutes and 1 second. It's interesting that although the A17 Pro was the fastest to pace the preset settings, it was quickly overtaken by the Snapdragon when it came to exporting the photos. Now let's see what happens when we hop into Adobe Premiere Rush. Rush is a simple video editing platform for desktop computers and mobile devices. It has basic tools for trimming and combining clips, also adding text and music. So what we've done is create a timeline with a 4K video that is 1 minute and 6 seconds long. And we've also decided to add some B-roll, but that's not all. We also sprinkled some graphic animations on top as we want to push all of these chipsets to the limit. To ensure that your timeline is always accessible wherever you are, you will need a stable internet connection. Of course, there are times when, you know, you may find yourself having to connect to a local Wi-Fi that you don't feel 100% secure about. Well, in that case, you may find a VPN to be very useful. Let me introduce you to Hide.me. Hide.me is one of the fastest offshore VPNs with 24-7 support and cross-platform access. Enjoy 10 gigabyte speeds across 2,300 servers globally. With this VPN, you can set your location to the US and access all the features the Google Pixel 8 Pro offers. You can also navigate the web with a trusted ally, SmartGuard, proactively guarding against malware, tracking, ads, and phishing threats in real time. Plus, they don't store logs, ensuring your actions remain yours. And the best part? You can start for free. Click the link in the description to secure your online freedom with Hide.me. Simple, secure, and yours. When rendering the short video, the A17 Pro's chipset crosses the finish line as the victor, exporting the full video in just one minute and one second. Very impressive. While it was quite close for the bronze medal, Snapdragon took over the Tensor G3 by just six seconds with an overall time of one minute and 43 seconds. The Tensor G3 comes last with one minute and 49 seconds. And while Adobe is on a cornerstone of video and photo editing, chipsets need to be designed for much more. Enter Microsoft Excel. I bet you never thought that Excel could be turned into a test, and as this isn't exactly something that will, you know, push a processor over the edge, we are using our super duper special ultimate Excel file, which has a grand total of 60,000 lines. Even then, results are coming in at a high speed, so there's no way to know who will be first, as there are just seconds between each device. And first place is Apple's A17 Pro with six seconds. 
wins. And then we have the Tensor G3 and the Snapdragon coming in almost at a tie, with 11 seconds to the Snapdragon and 13 seconds to the Tensor G3. These results aren't all too different, and let's be real, you won't be complaining about any of these chipsets, at least not in this test. However, sometimes it's the small results that matter the most. So it's time to take on the benchmark tests of the ages, starting off with Geekbench. It's definitely one of the most important apps out there that tests the functionality of devices as it benchmarks the central processing unit by modeling real world tasks. Its ability to reflect what actual users face on their mobile devices makes it shine. What I really like about Geekbench is how it splits the single and multi-core scores up because multi-core allows devices to run multiple processes at the same time with greater ease increasing your performance when multitasking or when using powerful apps and programs. The results are flying in and let's take a look at the single core scores first. The winner is the consistent A17 Pro with 2,868 points, with seemingly its greatest rival, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, right behind it with 2,268. In third place, we have the Tensor G3 with 1,626 points. The multi-core is arguably the more important of the two, so let's take a closer look. The pair of A17 Pro and Snapdragon are still head-to-head -head at 7,139 and 7,096 points, respectively. Tensor doesn't seem to get along too well with Geekbench, which is why it will remain in last place with a score of 3,598. Just to let you know, we take a 10-minute break between each test to ensure fairness of competition. Competition. Our records say that Antutu is next on the list. It's a benchmarking tool that is divided into multiple phases with the majority revolving around 3D animations. You can see these phases as well as their explanations on the displays of the phones while Antutu is working its magic. There's a small piece of information that I do need to share with you before we talk about their results. As stated on Antutu's website, there are differences in the kernel and the development language used by both systems, as well as the separate versions using different APIs when running the GPU test. Nevertheless, we're going to be giving you all the results just so you don't have any question marks left in your head. And these results are going to be as follows. Snapdragon has overtaken the competition with a very impressive result at just over 2 million. It is followed by the A17 Pro with just over 1.5 million, and in last place, the Tensor G3 with the lowest points at just under 800,000. So what do you guys think of the results? We're going quite straightforward, so how about I throw in a curveball in the form of Geekbench ML? What's this? Well, Geekbench ML uses real-world machine learning tasks to evaluate mobile inference performance. It measures your CPU, GPU, and NPU to determine whether your device is ready for today and tomorrow's cutting-edge machine learning applications. Just for those who aren't aware, NPU stands for Neural Processing Unit, which is a microprocessor that specializes in the acceleration of machine learning algorithms. Artificial intelligence is in the house and now in your mobile mobile phone. The tests range from image classification to machine translation, and the results are sure to be interesting since this test isn't necessarily known to be part of the big three benchmark names. And it looks like the A17 Pro is off the charts, comfortably taking the gold medal with a score of 2,507, with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 right behind it with 1,186. The whole point is to show you as many legitimate tests as possible, and now we are coming on to 3D Mark. This test determines the performance of a phone's 3D graphic rendering and CPU workload processing capabilities. As it is the case most of the time, higher numbers indicate better performances. Since these are all flagship devices with top-of-the-line processors, the test we've chosen is the Wildlife Extreme. Here, the Snapdragon outperforms the other two with an impressive score of 5,206. As expected, the Tensor G3 comes in last place with 2,393 points. So is that all? Not quite. We're not holding back this time. Benchmark Web 3.0 is a comprehensive web browser performance benchmark that tests how well your mobile or desktop system can use web-based applications. This benchmark includes various system and graphic tests that use the web recommendations and features. Basemark Web 3.0 measures real-world client-side performance to detect browser bottlenecks. I'm not surprised that the A17 Pro has taken first place here with the highest score, but in Interestingly enough, the Snapdragon comes second, placing the Tensor G3 last yet again. 
And we have finally reached the end of the greatest chipset comparison of all time. Checking out the batteries, I see that the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 has 86% left, while the A17 Pro has 82% left and the Tensor G3 has only 76% left. Now that we've crossed the finish line for good, let's check out the overview of the tests. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 grabbed the first win in the Lightroom preset, whilst the A17 Pro was the winner of the Lightroom render test. The A17 Pro continued in first place during the Adobe Rush export. Excel and Geekbench also went the way of the A17 Pro, but the Snapdragon took over by winning the Antutu benchmark. A17 Pro continued its run by taking the AI testing Geekbench ML, but Snapdragon fought back into first place during the 3D Mark test. It's definitely been an interesting battle between the A17 Pro and the Snapdragon. Finally, the A17 Pro claims back first place during the Benchmark Web 3.0 test. We put an insane amount of effort into these tests and this video, so if you enjoyed watching, then please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel to be a part of our Versus community if you aren't already. And with that being said, we'll see you in the next video, and until then, take care.